Hello and welcome to a review of Imperator Rome uh, by Paradox Studios and uh, published by Paradox Interactive. So it is a, a new current story game from Paradox uh, in the vein of a U4, CK2, Hearts of Iron, Celaris, and all of these amazing grand strategies. And this one, uh, as the name tells, uh, Imperator Roma, it is uh, set to the Roman period. Uh, but in, in addition to just playing Rome, you can also play, of course, uh, as in other previous uh, uh, Paradox games, you can play any of the nations, uh, uh, basically on the map. But the heavy, heavy focus, of course, uh, especially at launch, is uh, on, on the Roma, uh, Greek, uh, Egypt, all these big uh, nations uh, during uh, that uh, time period. And uh, uh, before we jump into the game, uh, I want to say a few things, things about the like, performance and everything. So I've been playing uh, the game uh, on my uh, new PC uh, with basically everything maxed uh, uh, and all that. Uh, and the, the game runs really good. Performance on launch is, is really good. Even a uh, late game against uh, when you're a great power yourself with a big nation against other big nation and all that. Uh, performance seems really good, which is uh, compared to some other uh, releases, uh, Paradox releases previously. But performance was maybe not the greatest at some point, sir. Uh, but for for this one, they seem to have done a really good job. Also, uh, like graphics-wise, uh, the game looks really good, especially the map and everything, which we'll see in a second. Uh, looks uh, really, really good. Although there is maybe some few nitpicks uh, I would change in there. But anyways, let's uh, jump into single player. We'll start a new game, and we'll have a world generate for us, and then we get to see. The, the extent of uh, countries you can actually play in this game. So here's uh, here's our map. It's it, it's daunting uh, uh, to look at first, considering you can play any of these. Wh whichever name and country color you see on the map, you can play it. For example, if you want to play uh, Remy here in uh, uh, somewhere in Germany, uh, you can play as a little tribe uh, with a Druidic uh, Treverian culture. Uh, but of course, uh, as I said, uh, focuses on Rome, uh, uh, Greece, or Macedonia, Macedonia. There's also uh, small Greek colonies on the coastline here that you can play. Uh, Egypt, uh, Silsid Empire, uh, Ma Maurias in India, then uh, Phyrakia in, uh, in here, uh, Turkey, basically. And all, all of these uh, 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 main big ones are the games recommended nations, as you can see here, Rome. Uh, Egypt, uh, Carthage, as case, of, of, of course, Carthage in the coastline here, and so on. And uh, especially in launch, uh, most of the events and everything is very much focused on, on these big ones. And uh, playing as one of the smaller ones uh, may not, not be as uh, enjoyable. Uh, and it's uh, fairly sandboxy at the points. The game in, in general feels uh, very sandboxy. And uh, it plays pretty much like previous Paradox Crunch Strategy games. Uh, Bit, a little bit, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's of course its own own thing, but it is uh, very reminiscent of uh, CK2 and U4. It's something a little bit between them, as you have uh, your rulers and other characters, they have their families and stats and everything, kind of like in uh, CK2, but you are running a nation instead of uh, basically a family line uh, in CK2, so you're a bit, uh, bit of both. Uh, maybe one could say best of the both worlds as well. But also some of the worst of the go, <laughs> not maybe not worst, but some of the uh, bad things about also about them, and uh, it feels uh, very much like a vanilla paradox game at release. Uh, just like uh, if you played Hearts of Iron Four or Stellaris at release, the more recent uh, 4X releases uh, from uh, Paradox. So it is uh, very fun and enjoyable uh, in its current form, but it is very sandboxy and. Uh, but it, it's 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 working fine. Like there's a really good core gameplay there, uh, as a ruling a nation and uh, doing combat and all that. But it feels like almost every aspect, other aspect of the game, could use a little bit of a uh, work. Let's just jump in as a Roma, because uh, I mean it's Imperator Roma. We are uh, a Roma local power, just a small power currently here. As you grow, you become a regional power, great power, and so on. Uh, and uh, we are an aristocratic republic, so this is our government form. We get uh, rulers uh, every five years. There's monarchies, there's uh, tribal uh, uh, governments, and so on. Uh, we are Hellenic religion. Uh, so, sorry, we are Hellenic uh, yeah, religion, and we are culture is Rome. So uh, there's different religions, uh, Druidic, uh, and so on. Uh, uh, we are Hellenic, Hellenic, Arabic, and so on. Uh, uh, religions sadly do not uh, seem to uh, differ 
that much from each other. I'll show you in a moment a little bit more. But yeah, we'll start and jump into the room. There's a uh, difficult settings, uh, which is nice. Uh, I'll just play with normal. Iron Man mode for those who want the uh, Iron Man challenges also enables the achievements as in previous games as well. And then uh, there's mixed, mixed uh, gender roles, which enables uh, uh, gender equality, even if uh, historically gender equality wasn't really a thing. But I, I like to play with uh, with this. Uh, because it, um, I don't play his, uh, Paradox games as historical sandboxes. I play them uh, to break the history. And I want to see. Where, I, I love to see when history goes off the rails and totally somewhere where it shouldn't, shouldn't. So we'll go with that. You can also play as observer. So if you just want to watch uh, world burn from an eagle eye view, uh, you can do that. Uh, also, you can do it with a uh, uh, multiplayer. So you can have uh, people multiplaying, and you can even like uh, just basically be a commentator if you really feel like doing that. But let's just uh, start this. I love this portion of the game because in previous games you just. Uh, you look at the map and you're like, okay, this is here, this is here. And then you press the start button and it uh, generate the map and all that. In this, you press start button and boom, we're in the game. And I, I love that fact about this. It was uh, one thing that uh, really just uh, jumped at my face uh, when I played this first time. Uh, but yeah, uh, so we're getting some lore uh, about Rome and everything. So here we are back and you can zoom in uh, fairly close and uh, you can see that uh, the map. Up close is very beautiful. You have your um, cities rendered there, your units, uh, armies. Uh, these are actually mercenaries there in Rome, and so on. Uh, and uh, it looks uh, it looks very good. One of the things uh, about uh, uh, like just uh, from uh, immediately jumping in the game, what well, I'm not sure about is this uh, this point of the map, uh, zoom. So when you zoom out this much, you can see all this information with the countries and everything. You can also have your all all your um, Map modes, so you see the different cultures, so you can see religions, uh, the how they're spread, Druidics and uh, Iberics and our Hellenic, and so on. The usual stuff from uh, Paradox games. Uh, and when you zoom in like uh, close, it's fine. It's, it's still a little foggy on this one, and then the fog goes away from here. And kind of in the middle portion here, where I would like to play the game most of the time, personally, uh, where I see kind of my uh, provinces and everything. I see the enemies' provinces uh, or neighbors' provinces and uh, all of this, and I see the units uh, properly. Uh, they have this like a cloud layer here and fog, uh, which uh, kind of mutes out all the colors, mutes out every uh, all all of that fun fine detail. And I wish uh, this was toggleable to get away from this. But uh, if you've played a uh, uh, Paradox games before, uh, you know it's a lot of uh, menus of things. Uh, this is the national overview. This is the government overview. There's a lot of things, a lot of buttons, a lot of uh, cryptic menus and uh, information basically shotgunned all over the UI that you have to just uh, dig up and find uh, going through these menus. There's a million overlays with uh, uh, like information. Uh, there's uh, mechanic names. There's plus or minus and lots of lot. There's a lot to take in in a paradox game. If you have played a previous like a say U4, you know like what discipline, man, national manpower uh, and uh, national tax and all, what, what all of most of these do uh, like in, in context of Paradox game but then you need to also put them into context of Imperator as well and there's a, there's a lot of information uh, in here but a lot of uh, this is very intuitive if you have played uh, a Paradox game before if you haven't then I, uh, I guess good luck <laughs> uh, try to figure out stuff uh, uh, it will take definitely some time and a few runs uh, before you kind of start to figure out where where everything is, what what this button do, and how do I deal with this problem here and there. Um, but uh, uh, comparing this to like previous games, I, I'd say still, even though the UI has the all all the problems that the Paradox game has, uh, good and bad uh, uh, issues uh, with their system, is that uh, getting into this is actually not that bad. It looks very daunting. When I, when I saw like for this for this, this uh, government window, it's like, holy moly, there's a lot of things in here. But it actually is not that bad. You quickly figure out like what does what, and uh, it's not that rough at all. Uh, you take it just one uh, problem by problem and go from there. But yeah, uh, so basically we are playing Rome here, and let's go quickly through like the menu. Uh, so you've map your map modes, your outliner that gives you information of your well, basically everything. From armies to navies to combat and sieges and so on, on, very handy. You have your timeline, your speed buttons, uh, your menus in there, uh, your score, overall score, how good you are doing. You have your uh, money, manpower uh, for making armies and supplying your armies. Uh, 
these are basically your manas, if you know manas <laughs> uh, for previous games. So you have a character, so for example, a Bublius here, and he has a stats. Uh, so he has a 7 military, uh, 9 uh, civic power, uh, 6 oratory power, and uh, 8 religious. So stats of your ruler affect your uh, gain on these. As you can see, for there is a base value and then a console who is a this guy. So you are earning these points based on your uh, base values and uh, uh, government things. Uh, for example, this one here uh, and all of that. And these uh, you can be used for different things. So uh, military power, for example, is used here in military screen, as uh, you would uh, think. And uh, you have a uh, Traditions here, so we are Italic traditions. These traditions depend, of course, what country you're playing. Uh, there's a uh, different focuses, like uh, Rome gets very heavy focus on heavy infantry here, and then you get uh, Roman roads and all kinds of abilities like this. Greeks have, uh, for, for example, this raiding ability. You can raid uh, slaves from the coastline uh, somewhere down here with Carthago, and so you get focus on elephants and so on. There's a little nuances of difference in these uh, traditions that uh, affect uh, the formation of your armies and so on, uh, the gameplay a little bit, uh, which is actually really nice. And you can choose uh, freely uh, from the beginning and then you go down. As you unlock this one, you can go uh, down here and so on, so they go like straight lines. So there's basically three different uh, three here that go just uh, down in order. But you can choose how to progress in this. Then you have your civic power, which is basically your uh, uh, kind of governing uh, ability. So, for example, here uh, you can do your current ideas. Actually, this is from oratory power. So this is the mm, government or a national overview, and you can uh, affect uh, things by choosing uh, different ideas here: civic, military. So there's basically idea for every uh, of these four, uh, and if you match these. Uh, so military, military, orator, uh, oratory for uh, Roma, you get uh, different bonuses based on that. You can also see your uh, provinces here and all the other information. Then you have your government window, where you have ruler, you have uh, different uh, government bodies, you have your factions in Senate, or basically ruling parties, and uh, how you like them and so on. And these affect a lot of things. Uh, basically, this is uh, more of the character side of the game, so when once you have a uh, well, once you put in characters here, their ability, for example, he has seven uh, uh, religious power, so his seven religious power here gives us a uh, plus uh, 14 uh, omen power, and so on. So this is where you basically mix and match uh, uh, skilled characters uh, who are loyal to you to work uh, uh, for different uh, roles uh, that benefit your uh, uh, nation in various ways, like army and religion and so on. Then we have a uh, technology, and this is uh, this is where the civic power comes. So this is your take three, basically. Uh, you have uh, advances, levels of advance, which are unlocks more options here, and selecting these options uh, gives you more points in there, basically. So you progress through these, uh, and you get new ones, and you progress through these with your uh, uh, civic power, and you buy basically invention inventions, and there's uh, basically everything uh, from military to diplomacy to taxes and so on for your nation here and they kept uh, more uh, varied and more interesting uh, as you uh, go in go in there they're fairly similar between countries uh, I'm, i would almost say that they are actually similar same for each country as you progress uh, and these uh, do quite big difference uh, uh, whoever is uh, first in these is doing very well then you have your religion and this is the this is one of the uh, points where uh, Mm, I'm a bit uh, iffy about the game. Religion is basically the same for everyone, even though you have Hellenics and uh, you have this uh, religion map mode, Druidics and so on. Uh, this window is basically the same. You have your stability, you have your national unrest, you have your unity, omen duration, uh, omen power, and uh, war exhaustion. And then you have these uh, here uh, that give you different bonuses. Uh, and these bonuses are basically the same, depend uh, regardless of the uh, uh, your actual religion. And uh, only the names of the blessings and or whatever that happen to be called uh, as a druidic instead of Hellenic uh, just changes. Uh, same or omen power and same same thing. You just press a button, you get this buff for X time. And uh, I wish uh, the religions were a little more, uh, little more uh, uh, developed and had more uh, impact into the actual gameplay, other than just uh, I want this buff for this duration. And also, I wish there was a lot more uh, events related to that because uh, in like Roman period and uh, in a Greek uh, nation or a, or a Druidic nation, uh, 
uh, a tribe here uh, rights religions and uh, all of that belief system affected a lot to the daily life of your uh, characters that were in, in your government superstitions and uh, uh, all of that and i wish uh, that was uh, brought in more through events there is some of that but i, I think it needs a lot more uh, than there is currently and let's go then uh, economy so this is where you start to go in the deep gameplay there's not much uh, super interesting in here this is where you, how you make money and how you change things uh, which really <laughs> how you run your nation and this is what you will be fiddling a lot with uh, as you play decisions so these are uh, more uh, uh, flavor to uh, each country so you get decisions so like we took the social equality which was the choice in the beginning this allows men and women uh, serve in the office but then there's also forming a republic uh, political republic oligarchies, theocratic republics, or dictatorships, uh, so you can change your government forms here, and you can also do, uh, like, nation-specific nation, uh, things here, like a uh, temple of Jupiter Optimus Maximus, which uh, is a Roma, Rome-specific thing, and you have uh, different things for, uh, like, Macedonia here, or Egypt, and so on, and this is a, this is a really nice uh, way to do things. Also, as you progress through the game, there might be some new ones popping up, maybe, uh, Electing a god emperor as you have an empire going on and so on and uh, These are cool, and I wish there was even more of these throughout the game You have your trade overview. So what you're trading here. So trading is actually a big part uh, in this game And it is uh, uh, highly improved in my opinion compared to a uh, For example you force trade where trade is a super powerful money maker and uh, especially for uh, certain countries uh, in this one uh, everyone gets to trade <laughs> properly and the uh, trade is uh, done uh, by uh, uh, Province by province. So, for example, here is our Rome, and we have one trade route here. So, let me actually quickly do a change here so we can actually try it out. So, if you do this, we get an additional trade route here. And we are currently uh, producing or have in uh, in the Latium here, which is the bigger. Uh, so, this is a uh, this is actually the city of Roma, but it's the province of uh, Latium. So, this is a bigger area. This whole bigger area that's uh, lit up here is the same uh, province. And this whole province has these goods, not just a uh, single uh, cities basically in there. So, the smaller parts are cities, and this is the whole province. Also, this is kind of interesting compared to uh, uh, previous uh, uh, Paradise games. When you declare, uh, when you do a Kesus Belly, so Kesus Belly is a reason to go to war basically, uh, you uh, declare a Kesus Belly. Or fabricate Kesus Belly basically uh, to a whole province. Um, so they, you you want the whole province, not just a single city in there. So you don't need to capture each one of these by one by one. You take the whole bigger region uh, in a war if you can, of course. And that's actually a really good change. Uh, but anyways, we are we are producing all kinds of things in here, and we can use uh, new trade routes. There's a lot of uh, goods in here. More more of the mouse over thing. But well, although once you play this a little bit, uh, you figure out, like, uh, okay, this gives me a local population growth, this gives me a surplus of happiness for our free men, and so on, uh, and uh, you can uh, import things, uh, uh, wood gives you ability to build boats, and so on. I think Romans want some uh, fish, they don't have fish, they have uh, they have salt and horses and uh, little olives, I think they need uh, a grain, they need a little bit of fish to go with that. So then you uh, choose where you want to import it from, you can import it from your other uh, province if they have surplus but usually you probably uh, uh, import it or export it uh, to your neighbors or someone close by and uh, if they like you they might do it if they don't like you they're not gonna give you their fishies and so let's uh, just uh, do there this gives us a bonus this uh, gives us a happiness and uh, also local population growth and also uh, we get the money from doing a uh, uh, trade routes. So doing a lot of trade routes is actually really good to like, earn money, at least uh, early game. Even uh, as a Roma you can get a lot of money out of that, and even if you play some uh, small nation like Massalia here, who is uh, just here, these two dots here and here, so they have four different cities in there, very spread out. But even they can make decent money uh, through, uh, through trade. Doing more trade routes, uh, especially on the coast, uh, it does increase your uh, chance of piracy, so you might get some pirates uh, bothering your coastline uh, thanks to that and then you need to send your own fleet to deal with that uh, we have a diplomacy window all the nations but we have subjects and so on this is us 
And we can look at, uh, for example, our neighbor, we can see their alliances, we can declare wars on them, we can ally them, we can uh, ask for military access, and so this is very basic uh, from uh, any paradox game. So this is how you deal with your neighbors uh, uh, diplomatically. You can sell them, uh, sell them cities, you can threaten war. Uh, if you have a castle belly, uh, for example, this city, you can threaten a war. And uh, you're, if you're big enough, they might just, uh, okay, you'll, you'll take this, uh, we don't want it. And so on. So diplomacy is uh, hidden in here, and it's actually uh, it's it's as good as in any in, in any paradise game, uh, with uh, some added kind of character stuff in there, like uh, if ruler likes you and so on. You might have some uh, bonus from there. Then you have a uh, your uh, uh, mercenaries. So mercenaries are same as uh, in other paradise games. You hire mercenaries, but instead of uh, just uh, magically appearing, mercenaries are actually companies that are uh, on the map. So, for example, there is mercenaries already here. They're just chilling around Rome here. Uh, and you can hire these specific groups, which is kind of interesting. You can also get rid of them if you don't want them to be there. They're also, they can be bought by, by your enemies, which in a war might be kind of bad when suddenly Rome is surrounded by um, huge armies of mercenaries. But that's basically the UI and all the things you have to deal with. There is also the macro builder that allows you to um, make buildings, recruit uh, armies and uh, so on. Uh, through here a little bit easier than going each uh, province to province. Uh, so, uh, as, as you see, there's uh, all, all the mechanics that you would expect from a Paradox Scratch strategy in there, but uh, it uh, has uh, some parts that it's very much not as great, I would say. So, this game is set to a Roman period, uh, so you would think uh, it would be oozing flavor from like Rome, uh, Greece, Egypt and all these uh, Carthage and everything, but it actually is not. There's just not enough uh, events and different things to uh, really push that uh, that we are in Rome. We are, this is actually Rome. This could be like what any ever uh, in the current game. You don't really you don't really play Rome. You play whatever this nation happens to be, and you have armies and you just go around killing people. Uh, <clears throat> and it needs more of that. Like uh, Greek has uh, Olympics and there's a couple of these events that kind of it's like yes we are playing Greece and we have Olympics but I wish there was a lot more like historical uh, events and more events in general uh, that really reinforced the idea that this is actually uh, impaired or Rome or a, a Roman period uh, strategy simulator because uh, there's just not so much uh, that really uh, gives the soul to the game like it doesn't feel like you're playing a uh, a historical game. It, it feels like you are playing a just a map game, very good around killing people, and it is pretty much in current form very much a pure just land conquering game. There's not a uh, much like deep diplomacy and all of that uh, in the game. You don't uh, you don't do lots of lots with the families. They're kind of eh, whatever. You don't really get connection to your characters here, uh, even though you have a lot of characters uh, in the list here. You don't really get this connection to any of these people. They're just uh, whatever you scroll through. Okay, you have good stats. I'll take this guy. Especially as a, as a republic, uh, because your government changes every five years. This guy is gone in, in like heartbeat. I don't care about him. Uh, you can't rename people, so you can't put your own uh, RPG spin into this. You can't really rename anything other than armies, uh, which uh, I wish you could. Uh, just give us a able, able to name, ability to name babies and all of that uh, as we fish. So there's there's a a lot of that uh, that should be in there that would uh, make the game uh, make make these characters feel more like your own characters and give you the reason to actually care about these characters other than just well you're another guy let's just put you to sword I don't care you're exiled uh, or so on uh, there's uh, just not that connection to these you don't get that CK2 style uh, tie to your whole whole bloodline and caring about your cousins and caring about these children and fighting with your aunt and whatever you the, the, it just doesn't uh, really happen this you do make friendships and you do make a little bit of that. But in the end, it's it's very much whatever. And they, they did say that they don't want to focus on that as much as in CK2. But I, I think they should focus a little more than in the current form. Because you just don't feel like any connection to them. If you do play tribals or if you play monarchies, uh, they are a little bit better. Because you keep the leader and you don't change the leader all the time. So you get a like, whole lifetime of that one guy, basically as a ruler. And it does make a lot more... Uh, interesting thing that but this is go this is again this is imperator rome the rome greece and so on should be the focus and the changing leader should be also more interesting to play as um, and as i said uh, religions are basically the same uh, for everyone uh, and that's another one where uh, i would wish uh, there was a little bit more uh, potential and this uh this uh like a uh, 
everything being fairly generic and kind of whatever, and you just warfare, it hurts, especially the smaller nations. Although tribals have a lot, quite a lot of events, surprising much compared to like uh, even the big ones, uh, which is a, a good thing. It's just that the other ones also need the same uh, same treatment. But for example, I've been playing uh, Massalia, Massalia here for a, uh, I did like many tries on them, and because they have a very generic uh, everything uh, in this current version, I'm sure they're gonna get more flavor in the future. Uh, they're, to be honest, pretty boring to play. Pretty hard also to play because you don't have any of the events to help you out for no free claims like the Rome gets or anything and uh, you have a lot of tribals in the nearby near, uh, area who just uh, ally and defensive pack each other and then you're getting crushed but which is kind of historically correct because they, these colonies in the coastlines here did not do super well and they did definitely have problems with these guys but as a game uh, where you can have the choice of playing of any, any of these it feels like there's not really reason to play any of these currently, as they're very generic and uh, not the most interesting. Unless you really want to play that very sandboxy, super hard uh, start with uh, like Massilia or one of these, say this one dot here, and try to deal with these, I, then it's okay of course. But personally I would wish there was a little more uh, uh, like flavor around everything uh, in here really. From, from religion, uh, from characters, from events, from like everything really that allowed you to uh, firstly play it more interestingly just from the events popping up and also from uh, your own uh, maybe roleplay aspects as well but anyways, uh, like Rome, this game wasn't built in one day I guess and it has really good bones and really good basic mechanics like what you expect to have in a Paradox game but it needs a lot more flavor around uh, all of that. They need deepening of the mechanics, they need more, more uh, events, they need everything to like more to bring out everything, every feature. And they are kind of doing, they are doing that. So they have, uh, an, uh, they, they said that there's going to be 1.1 patch after a launch based on player feedback and also what they have issued, uh, uh, or I'm uh, sorry, not uh, issued, but identified themselves already uh, as some of the key features that need uh, immediate uh, help. Especially like uh, pirates, naval systems and characters related to naval stuff and all that. Because uh, for example when you're uh, having an army, uh, like a normal army, you can have tactics, uh, you can do all kinds of things uh, with these, uh, you can uh, decide on uh, army width and so on. And they want to bring more of that to the navy as well, more interesting characters and more interesting uh, abilities for, uh, or not abilities, but uh, uh, these traits uh, for uh, more like uh, for military characters, so army generals and uh, naval uh, commanders and so on uh, but it's not there in the launch yet and uh, that 1.1 patch should be somewhere in mid-June-ish after the launch and uh, it might not be bad to just see and wait what happens mid-June unless you are super into the game uh, as a Paradox super fan and you really want to just go into that but if you are a new player uh, this is the best time to get into uh, a new Paradox game before there's a million DLCs and million uh, new features and everything, like everything is gonna get that deeper uh, deeper mechanics and deeper stuff and more events and everything. This is the time to get into it, because there's not so much yet, and then uh, build up from uh, that experience into there. But uh, also, if you're a new player and you haven't played for, played for example U4 or CK2, it might be a good time to just wait a little bit longer with this, unless you really want to play Roman period, and maybe try out the other games and see if you like say, uh, U4 or CK2, because there's a lot more meat. Uh, as they have been out for many many years already and have years of uh, content added to them it might be better idea to check out those first uh, basically but if you are in if you have played those to death uh, maybe you want to check out this uh, one big disappointment I have with this game uh, which uh, relates to the DLC is that uh, it is sold uh, as a $40 game uh, so the base game uh, and then you have uh, a digital deluxe which is uh, basically $60 or, or so or your own uh, variant of money is what you pay in Europe or wherever, uh, so euros, uh, is that uh, there's a Hellenic flavor uh, pack, which, uh, as you can see, we have Hellenic in here, so Greece, Rome, all of the key focus of the game, so we are Imperator Rome again, this is, the, this is focused on Rome and Roman period, and you have a game, core game is forty dollars and does not include the Hellenic flavor pack. I think the Hellenic flavor pack 
should be part of the main game and even deeper what the Hellenic Failure Pack currently offers and not sold as an extra DLC uh, in the digital de deluxe format or, or as a separate if you, if you buy it later, off, later on after uh, as an upgrade. So it's, it's kind of like mm, your ba main game is missing that flavor, especially as the Hellenic Nations, which are the main focus, especially should be as at, at the launch. And then the DLC is sold as separate one. It's kind of mm, it should be the base game. But yeah, uh, that's kind of disappointing to me, to be honest. Uh, and uh, if you really want the f full vanilla launch experience, that uh, digital deluxe is probably what you should get to get the DLC as well. Especially if you want to play Rome and all of these. And uh, I think that also shows as that we have the Hellenic World uh, flavor pack, that there's going to be flavor packs for other parts of the world as well. Egyptian uh, flavor pack, so on and so on. Alexander's Children flavor pack. Uh, tribal flavor packs and maybe all of that. So we will get some of that later on, but there <clears throat> just isn't that yet. Which I wish was more fleshed out in the release version. But as with other Paradox games, uh, uh, at release, they have concrete base and they will build up on that over time. So it is it is probably definitely worth <laughs> checking out either right now or with a 1.1 patch. It is, a, it is a solid uh, paradox experience, but it is just very vanilla at the moment and just needs uh, more time and love to boil and brew and get some more of those uh, meat around the bones of Rome and everything. But anyways, that is my uh, not so quick uh, <laughs> review of <laughs> Imperator Rome. Uh, so thank you for watching this review and if you like this review, uh, check out other reviews on the YouTube channel. Uh, also check out my channel on twitch.tv slash pelanar and check out the other reviews as well in the creator group. And uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.